This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Do you ever see a knitted piece with an amazing, whimsical, goofy little graphic and you think, oh yeah, come to Papa. And as much as we like to find these bad boys at the thrift store, especially vintage ones, they're basically extinct at this point. So my next thought would be, well, heck, I'll just learn how to do it myself. Can't be that hard, right? Alas, as confident as I am in my own creative skill learning abilities, even I am not Delulu enough to think that I could learn how to one, knit, two, to knit intarsia. That's what this cool multicolored knitting technique is called and three, to knit an entire garment by the new year. Oh, did I not mention that I wanna have this done by the new year? What day is it? Oh my God. But lucky for us, we have a workaround, a cheat code not even my PS2 Game Shark could compete with. We have the duplicate stitch or Swiss darning. That's right, with one simple hand stitch that anyone could do, we can create incredible intricate artistry on a pre-existing garment, even better. All we need is some yarn, and a hope and a dream and a needle in a pre-existing garment. To give Mega credit where credit is due, I recently learned about this technique from Lydia Morrow on Instagram. She customized this cardigan with duplicate stitching and oh my gosh, is she not the coolest and the cutest and please go give her a follow and check out her work and Lydia, can we please be friends? Thank you. Anyways, for our first attempt, I'd like to try two things. I'd like to try both text and more organic imagery. For the text, I'd love to customize a sweater with our favorite pet name here on the channel. This is by a fellow stinky named Umber. Thank you, Umber, this is so cool. And for the graphic, I wanna recreate something like this, Felix Jump Scare. Yes, the iconic knitted hood that Felix from Stray Kids recently wore. And don't we all wanna be a little bit more like him? Speaking of, make sure you stick around to the end of the video because we're gonna be doing a worldwide giveaway that will hopefully get us a little closer to our dreams becoming a reality. But first, let's head to the thrift store, search for some sweaters, and spoiler alert, things do not go quite as we planned. But before you head to the thrift store, you're gonna wanna know what to look for, right? So we're gonna be looking for a knitted piece that is made up entirely or almost entirely of this basic stockinette stitch, the classic V-shaped knitted stitch, and the chunkier, the better. I don't think I realized how actually hard it was gonna be to find the exact right sweater with the exact right stitch that was actually cool and fit me, but we have some options. Also, I found Demonius, Thrift God's Gibbet. This is one of the first ones I found and I was like, oh, this is the perfect stocking stitch. It's a little small, I was looking for something bigger, but then the bottom looks like this, the top looks like this, not my favorite. And then I found this just gray guy and I was like, all right, that'll work. Stitch is a little bigger, so it'll be easier, but it's kind of boring and a little bit floppy. I'm looking for a little more body. Found this cute little guy. I wasn't sure how I would tackle the cable here, but love the button up cardigan, very cute. And then I found kind of the same thing, but with bigger stitches, which is helpful. But again, we've got cabling, we've got little channels here. That's gonna be difficult. And I was giving up hope, I'm not gonna lie. But then I found this, which is 100% wool and a good size, the perfect canvas for our art making. Also, can you believe this? This is like what we wanna do. Look, incredible. Also, very cute as well. I don't know if this is it, y'all. Ladies, lords, lassies, and little babies. I think we're ready to get started. And yes, I did get the sailboat sweater yesterday. It's just a great example of what we're trying to do. This is learning materials, it's a business expense, okay? Okay. Anyways, this is what we ended up finding and this is what you'll need for this project. I think, I haven't done it yet, but so far this is what I can tell you'll need. First, we need our canvas, our blank items that will be duplicate stitching upon. Now, this was the hardest part because I had to find pieces that had that classic knit stitch, the stockinette stitch, stocking stitch. I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's the whole, that's the whole reason we're doing this video. So I finally found this little cropped turtleneck. I believe it's from Abercrombie originally, and it was $6. Very cute, it's like this powdery blue color, which I'm very into. And then if you watched last week's video, I picked up this hood balaclava moment. Also has that classic knit pattern. This is originally from Target, still has the tag. So if you have one of these, join along with me, will you? Now you'll notice that these two pieces aren't even totally perfect because they're ribbed. They have these channels going up and down. So it'll be a little more difficult to stitch on top of them and make sure that there's coverage on top of everything because if there's not, they'll be the channels will be visible. Even after I finish my duplicate stitch, I have two ideas on how to fix that. One is the yarn choice that we made. You're gonna need some yarn. 
isn't this color palette so very good for me and you and us so one of the ways that i was going to fix the ribbing problem was choosing a yarn that is a little chunkier than the yarn that makes up my canvas piece so that when we go on top of it with the stitch it's a little bulkier and hopefully will cover those channels of ribbing in between our duplicate stitches and if that doesn't work and when we do our stitches you can still see the ribbing the channels in between all we have to do i think is flip it inside out and do duplicate stitches on the inside which should fill in the channels on the outside once again haven't done it yet so we'll see additional items you may need well you definitely need uh needles these are darning needles so they're a little thicker they have a big Big eye hole. You could also use a tapestry needle, same kind of thing, but potentially with an angled tip. And then this is an extra that I picked out. I don't think you need this, but it's one of those washable fabric markers because if we're gonna try this for the first time we're gonna try it a couple different ways and see what works best for us so first I'm gonna use an actual stitch pattern that I'm gonna create myself for the sweater I want to do a word so I need to make sure the letters are kind of perfect to make sure that they're legible once they're like bulky and yarny so we're gonna make a pattern for that but then for the hat I just want to do some sort of graphic something a little more freehand so I thought instead of making an actual pattern and following it to the T I'll simply sketch on the shape that I want to make Make and then fill it with duplicate stitches. We'll see which one I like more. Also, I just tried to give myself like a 90s hair blowout, which means my bangs are pushed back and you're getting a free view of my forehead. This is premium content. You're welcome. All right, enough beeping and bopping around. Let's actually do this thing. I'm scared. We're going to make a pattern. I don't know how to make a pattern. So like I said, I want the sweater to be a word, a word across the chest, a statement word. And what what would be better than stinky? I was trying out different typefaces to see which one I liked most. Gotta get that classic Kathleen Illustrated black letter goodness. And, and here's where we ended up. You probably can't see that very well. So I found this website called Stitch Fiddle where you can make patterns from a picture that you have on your computer. So I have my stinky. And then you can change all these things like how big you actually want each pixel, a pixel being one stitch. And then it does a pretty good job, but there's a little bit of aliasing, which is like when you get that jagged edge on that corner where it could just be like a straight line. So then you can go in and like an artist, like the artist you, it just crashed. Like the artist you are, customize things. Like I don't need this extra little row. I don't need this guy. I don't need that guy. Clean it up. So I already measured my sweater and counted the rows of stitches and how tall my area would be. So I think this is correct. This is not a tutorial on how to use Stitch Fiddle. It's my first time doing it. I'm sure there are ones that exist online that do a marvelous job. Anywho, if you wanted to tackle really intense imagery, especially with multiple colors, making a pattern like this is probably your best friend. And I think it'll be great for lettering. So let's go. Okay, get this crap out of here. Speaking of crap, this is not crap. I got a new calendar from Maddie Fisher. It's a risograph prints. Would you just look at that? The colors. You know what? I'm just gonna hang up January right now because this is my house. This is literally my house. And I can do whatever I want. While my pattern prints out, let's pick some colors, shall we? So again, pale blue with these. The brown would have the highest contrast, but I think that might be a little too boring. I'm looking for some saturation here. Next, I really like the idea of this like super bright orangey red. We'll call it poppy on this blue, but it has that visual um, vibration thing that I think might make it difficult to look at. So then we've got purple and green. The purple and the blue, so soft, so sweet, so innocent. But the green, doesn't that just feel stinky to you? I think that's a winner. I think that's a winner. Let me know down in the comments what you would do. But for me, for me and mine, we're going green, baby. And before we get started with the crafting, let's hear from today's sponsor, Squarespace. Would you like to ascend? And by ascend, I mean stand out and succeed online. Well, you're in luck because Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to do just that. So that may include building your own website for your brand or your portfolio or what have you using beautifully curated and designed templates that almost make it too easy to put your best foot forward online. But say you need something a little more simple. You just need a place to put all of your frequently used links and an easily tappable place online will enter the bio site. You can bring together everything you do and create online in one beautifully designed, super simple link. And if you did wanna go full out with a website, one thing I find to be super helpful is that you can connect your social media accounts to that site and have it pull in your newly posted content so that you don't have to lift a finger. You can do what you do best and let Squarespace do the rest. Wow, 
that rhymed. So check out squarespace.com to explore all of these features and sign up for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Kathleen Illustrated for 10% off your purchase of a website or domain using the code Kathleen Illustrated. Easy. And now on with the show. I've been practicing. We got this people. We've got the first leg of our N done. Now don't worry, I'll show you how to do this. I'll do a quick little mini tutorial, but I will say that I just learned this from watching other videos. So it's not like I'm the best source to learn this from. If you want something quick and easy and super simple, Emma from Made in the Moment has a great cute little tutorial. I'll link it down below. And then we have a much more in-depth walkthrough of what duplicate stitching is, when you might use it, etc., etc., from Two of Wands. Great options. But now let me show you the quick and dirty version. All right, here's the section I've been working on, but I'll just show you on a little test area. Here are our stitches. And we're simply going to be covering each of these little Vs doo, 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 with green thread in the same pattern so that it just looks like a little green stitch in a blue sweater. To start off, I've got my needle, got my thread, my threads, I don't know, like three or four feet long. And I'm gonna come through at the bottom of a V. It's where the point of the V is. That's where my string's coming up. We're gonna pull that bad boy, pull that bad boy all the way through. We'll leave a couple inches of thread on the other side. Now, this is where it gets really fun. So we're at the bottom of the V. Here's our stitch, V. We're gonna hop up to the next stitch, thread our needle behind that V, pull it through. Don't pull too hard. That's one thing I've noticed is to keep your tension pretty loose so that you don't see any of that blue behind the green. So now we've got our green right side of the V and now we need to complete it on the left side. So I'm just gonna insert the needle again at the bottom of the V that we originally came through. Pull it through and you should end up with a little green V on top of your blue V. Now notice this green thread, like I said earlier, is a lot thicker than this blue thread. So my V is a little bit chunky, which is good so that when I skip this ribbed area in between and move over to this set of stitches, they kind of touch each other like this. So there still is that rib in between, but you really don't see it since the thread is a little chunky. All right, next step, we're gonna come in from the back at the bottom of the next V, pull it through. Notice how I'm working from bottom to top. You can work from top to bottom, but it's just a lot easier to do this more quickly. Do you remember what we do next? Yep, we skip the V that we're working on, go to the next one and put our needle behind the two arms of the V, like so. Pull it through, not too tight, not too tight. And then reinsert our needle at the bottom of the V. And now we have two duplicate stitches on top of our original blue stitch. Again, those other tutorials that are a lot more in-depth will be linked down below. Please go give them a watch. Go tell Emma I said hi, and let's continue. is finished. Well, it's finished for now. Looking at this in the light of day when I don't have um, Singles Inferno and Love Island to distract me, looks about as good as a first attempt. Could look, I think. We had a couple things working against us. One, the ribbing means that we have half of the amount of stitches 
that were in the actual pattern, and that means we have half the amount of detail. So it's a little like chunky. It looks a little deep fried, but honestly, isn't that kind of the energy that we have here in this community? I'm really glad we've cultivated a vibe here that when things come out kind of wonky with a little personality, we all say, yeah, that feels right. That's actually kind of cool, but I'm so pleased with this color combo. I'll style it in some cute ways at the end, but for now, we need to work on our next project. It's no secret that knitted hoods or balaclavas have had their moment for the last couple seasons. I mean, longer than that, but they've definitely been in the spotlight. And when this little sweet peanut showed up at the airport wearing this knitted hood from Margaret Sherwood, it was, it was done. The deal was done. I needed something like that in my life. So we're gonna make it. Now listen, I don't want to just copy the one that already exists. You can go get it online. So we're going to keep the flavor of having two big symbols on either side. I think I'm going to do two different star shapes. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, instead of using a pattern, I'm just going to draw with a fabric marker and then just duplicate stitch within that sketch. Also in my last video when I tried this on, um, Katie left a comment that said something along the lines of that hood makes the perfect egg cosplay and they couldn't be more correct about that. I kind of want to just stitch the word egg on this, but we'll stick with stars for now. And if you're like, wow, that's a really cool idea. I wish I could have one of those. Stick around to the end of the video. Okay, let's get to sketching. All right, people, what do we think? What do we think? I feel like the yellow and brown is kind of a, a different play on black and white, but also, this is a happy combo, but also purple and yellow can't lose. Okay, well, we have two sides to do, so I'm guessing one side will be purple. If I had to wager a guess, and either the other side will be purple too, or maybe this color. Let's start with purple, that seems simple enough. But before I do that, I need to do a little star sketch. So, I want it to be about the size of my hand, and let's throw down some lines. I'm just gonna do a classic five-pointed star. That didn't do much. Go ahead, girl, give us nothing. Um, this is gonna this is gonna take a second. Enjoy the time lapse. While I'm working on this, I'm watching Alexa's Thriftmas series. If you didn't catch it last week, I mentioned that there was gonna be a surprise midweek video featuring myself. It was Alexa's Thriftmas episode with me. It was released yesterday and it's been so fun to see everyone's reactions and how there was one comment that was like, Kathleen and Alexa are my two moods. <laughs> and I think that's so funny. We are kind of like two sides of the same coin. I'm like this and she's like this. So if you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely go watch it. And if you're not following Alexa, yes you are. But if you aren't, you should go check her out. I feel like I've said this multiple times, but whenever anyone asks me what my favorite thing about having a YouTube channel is, I always respond it's the people I get to meet, either in the comments or fellow video creators. People like Alexa, who I've watched for years, and now I get to say that we're friends. That's wild. So thank you, Alexa. Thank you for all my thrifted goodies and also just for being cool. Kathleen and Alexa in person collab when? When? All right, I'm missing all the good stuff. Stop distracting me. I think I like this hood most when it's down and you can kind of see the stars on either side. How fun and colorful is this cozy little fit? Overall, I love how this came out. The blue and the green, perfect. Yellow and purple, perfect. I can definitely tell that my technique got better and also quicker as I practiced. So for example, there's some areas of the stinky that are a little like chunkier or wobblier than maybe intended. And then once I got to the stars on the hood, it was smooth sailing. I'm not sure which technique I prefer more, using a chart or just freehanding a sketch. Honestly, as long as there's a guide of some sort, I felt pretty comfortable. You could totally just freehand it completely, no sketch, no chart. And I know I referred to this method as a cheat code earlier in the video. I know it's not cheating, it's a totally legit technique. And for me personally, it worked as great motivation to actually learn how to knit, how to knit with color using intarsia. So let me know down below. Do you know how to knit? Have you ever tried duplicate stitching? Should I learn how to knit in 2024? Not gonna lie, I've already tried to learn multiple times and something just ain't clicking yet, but you know, practice makes progress. So I should probably try again. Cozy, creative perfection. What more could you want? 
I feel like I just unlocked an entire new skill tree. Although both of these projects are relatively simple, my mind is already buzzing with technicolor patterns, images, phrases to duplicate in 2024. Also, I shared a sneak peek of this stinky sweater on Instagram. If you also want sneak peeks, you can come join us over there at Kathleen Illustrated. And a lot of y'all were like, new merch? Kathleen Illustrated merch? Now, as much as I'd like to provide us all with Team Stinky Sweaters, I don't have enough hours in the day. However, if you'd like to tackle your own stinky sweater pattern, I've linked the stitch pattern down below for free. But if you do end up doing it, please tag me because I want to see it. And speaking of free things, let's talk about the giveaway. Did you forget there was a giveaway? I like this star hood so much that I just so happened to make a second one for one of you. If you'd like to matchy matchy with me, here's how you enter. First, subscribe to my channel, easy enough. Second, leave a comment down below saying that you want to enter the giveaway or something along those lines. That's it. I'll pick a random comment in one week and I'll respond to that comment letting you know that you won. So if you enter, please keep an eye on your YouTube notifications. You can check them in the little bell at the top or come back and check this video in a week. This is open worldwide. So if the US ships to your country, you can enter. Thank you so much for being here this year, for spending time with me. Next week, we're gonna be revisiting the video that started it all. My 2023-2024 trend predictions video. What did we get right? What did we get so, 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 so wrong? And the following week, we're going to be looking into what might happen in fashion and trends in 2024 and 2025 and beyond. So for now, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you have a great, safe, happy, healthy new year and that it's extra stinky. Stinky. Okay. I love you. Bye.